Hello, I'm Tim Mayer, and welcome to Hidden Creatures of Hearst Castle. We have many surprises here, and I'm excited to show off some unusual art treasures that you could easily pass by unless you're paying close attention. And it can help to have a magnifying lens and a pair of binoculars sometimes. Have you ever painted a picture of animals or people for your own walls at home? What about a strange combination of those two? Well, we'll see an example of that in 16th century Italian frieze paintings of incredible creatures called grotesques that are 400 to 500 years old. And these are hybrid forms that are usually set up in a symmetrical formation within an architectural framework. And what we'll be seeing is bands of horizontal designs that were, became part of a wall when the paint was applied to plaster and then was absorbed. Then it was painstakingly removed using a technique called, an Italian technique called strapo and using adhesives and canvas. And then it was sold, and Mr. Hurst bought it, and then it was reapplied here. Let's go have a look. We are in the lobby of La Casa del Mar, which means House of the Sea. William Randolph Hearst purchased these paintings above us nearly 100 years ago, and as a child admirer of art like this, wanted to collect it. He also enjoyed books and pictures. Have you ever read an illustrated book about make-believe? Maybe something like Dr. Seuss with creatures of imagination instead of reality? Like these? The frieze at the top of the wall goes all the way around the room. It is like a story that keeps going on and on because it is long enough for the end to meet the beginning. When human and animal figures are combined, like you're seeing here, they become fantasy creatures called grotesques. The term comes from grotta, which is Italian for caves, where Renaissance builders unearthed this ancient form of art in ruins that were formerly ancient Roman palaces of emperors Augustus and Nero. Today, the word grotesque has changed to mean weird, strange, ugly, or distorted, but it doesn't have to. Playful and elegant are closer to the original meanings of these forms, which were popular in the homes of wealthy Romans. Maybe they look like a daydream to you, and you can make up a story about them. When is the last time you let yourself daydream? Just don't do it in class. There are no individual names for the many types of these fantasy creatures. And it remains a mystery as to who the artist was. Remember to look closely because art can be fun, inspire your imagination, and transport you into realms of fantasy. Maybe you'll seek out some imaginary creatures in your own home, or maybe you'll make some. Thanks for visiting.